we are introduced to Yardley, a historic liberal arts university, in the film's opening moments. Gatsby, a promising young man, is seated in a classroom within its hallowed walls. He recounts the story of his journey to this prestigious college with a solemn demeanor. Despite a recent windfall of $20,000 from a successful poker endeavor, Gatsby's mother believes he has yet to achieve his pinnacle. As a result, she fervently pushed for his transfer to a more prominent school that might cultivate his skills and provide him with a greater education. In sharp contrast, Gatsby regards his new surroundings as dull, and mired in disciplinary rigidity, compared to his prior educational institution. In the following scene, Gatsby introduces us to his sweetheart, Ashley, with evident ardor. Their relationship had been fostered through familial ties, therefore, their bond is not new. As Ashley approaches him, her face radiant, she joyfully conveys news of a future significant interview with the renowned film director, Roland, in the bustling heart of Manhattan. Gatsby, the supportive partner, revels in her delight. Seated upon a bench, Gatsby meticulously creates great plans for their upcoming weekend. He promises to take her on an immersive tour of the city's treasures, after accompanying her to a magnificent lunch and an amazing supper at a prestigious place. As she jokingly emphasizes the need for significant finances for their vacation, Ashley's eyes sparkle with delight in the dazzling light of their love. However, citing his most recent poker victory as the wellspring for their journey, Gatsby reassures her with unflinching confidence. The happy feeling that surrounds the pair is captured in a sweet hug. Gatsby reveals his intention to have a covert presence in Manhattan, hidden from his parents' prying eyes, as they are filled with excitement for their upcoming trip. He informs Ashley about his excuse, a scheduled academic paper that would prohibit him from attending his mother's fall party. Their mutual excitement is obvious as they discuss their upcoming plans. Soon the pair finds themselves on a bus, their enthusiasm and delight palpable. Gatsby sits next to Ashley as she prepares for her encounter with Roland. Though she is plainly worried about this crucial interview with the acclaimed director, Gatsby's calm demeanor and unshakable confidence serve as a reassuring anchor. Upon their arrival in the heart of New York City, Ashley is awestruck by the penthouse suite overlooking the lush expanse of Central Park. Her suggestion of a romantic carriage ride is met with Gatsby's immediate acceptance, solely to kindle her happiness. Consulting his watch, Gatsby encourages Ashley to hasten her interview, to avoid potential traffic delays. As they arrive at Roland's hotel, Gatsby offers his heartfelt wishes for Ashley's success before embarking on his own journey to spend some time with his brother. In Roland's presence, Ashley's anxiety escalates, leading to stuttered confessions of her personal history, education, and even her sexual uncertainties. Roland, however, reciprocates with candor, sharing stories of his past and expressing dissatisfaction with his current film project. He contemplates the notion of quitting, confiding in Ashley as their conversation unfolds. After Ashley praises his originality and creativity, and paints a vivid picture of his directorial prowess, she secures an invitation from him for a private viewing of the film. In response, Ashley resolves to rearrange her lunch plans with Gatsby, opting to join Roland for the screening instead. Meanwhile, Gatsby roams the bustling streets of New York, acquires a cigarette holder, and openly confesses to his heavy smoking habit. While he traverses the urban landscape, fate suddenly reunites him with an old high school friend named Troller. Troller warmly greets him and playfully speculates whether Gatsby might have flunked out of his freshman year. However, Gatsby promptly denies it, explaining that he transferred to Yardley due to the lack of structure at his previous institution. As they catch up, Troller regales Gatsby with stories of their former classmates, some have embarked on new journeys, while others are on the brink of marriage. Eventually Troller mentions Josh, who is currently shooting a student film just around the corner. Troller is curious about Gatsby's presence in town, and Gatsby confides that he accompanied his girlfriend on a weekend excursion, during which she will be having an interview with a renowned director. As their conversation winds down, Troller confides in Gatsby, expressing skepticism about entrusting his girlfriend to a big-time Hollywood director. Later, within the confines of a hotel, we find Gatsby anxiously awaiting Ashley for their lunch date. However, Ashley arrives with different news, she is going to attend Roland's film screening. She enthusiastically describes the opportunity as extraordinary, and too precious to pass up. Gatsby's disappointment at missing their lunch together is palpable, yet Ashley assures him that she will make it up to him later in the afternoon. While they talk, Gatsby inquires about a man nearby, wondering if he might be Roland. Ashley confirms his identity, praising Roland's passion for the arts, which seems to be a magnet for his leading ladies. Gatsby thinks about approaching him, but Ashley dissuades him, explaining that Roland values his privacy. With a parting farewell, Ashley departs. With an open schedule and no particular obligations, Gatsby decides to visit Josh's film project, which he heard about earlier. The two friends exchange greetings and engage in a brief conversation, sharing updates on their respective lives. Josh encourages Gatsby to take a role in his film, initially facing reluctance, but ultimately Gatsby succumbs to the allure of the project, agreeing to participate. Josh assures him that there is no need for talking, he must merely step into the car and then escort the young lady out. 
Gatsby, brimming with assurance, declares his capability to undertake this task. In that place, we encounter Chan, the youthful sister of Amy, who presently takes part in Josh's cinematic project. As they exchange greetings and delve into a conversation about Amy's commitment to the field of political science, both of them embark on a journey together by stepping into a car. At this point, Josh intercedes and elucidates the forthcoming scene. Astonishingly, it transpires that their roles necessitate a passionate kiss. Gatsby, with candor, confesses to his lack of experience as an actor, and expresses regret if their on-screen chemistry falters. Chan, however, reassures him that her acting abilities are similarly untested, emphasizing her role in supporting Josh. She articulates her reluctance to pursue an acting career, citing the challenge of faking passion before the audience. Chan implores him to kiss her in a manner that genuinely arouses sensation from the tips of her toes. Gatsby amusingly discloses a prior encounter with locking lips with her sister, prompting Chan to joke that her sister had assigned him a modest rating of 4 or 6, a revelation that catches Gatsby off guard. Chan conveys her desire for the on-screen kiss to radiate heat and intensity, given the significance of the moment. Yet when the director, Josh, initiates the scene, the anticipated passion proves elusive. Chan, noticeably irate, inquires if Gatsby intends to keep his lips sealed. Gatsby, citing that he has a girlfriend from Arizona, endeavors to explain his hesitancy. Chan teasingly ridicules him for dating someone from outside his social environment. Following several takes interwoven with playful banter, Chan takes Gatsby's face tenderly in her hands, and the two eventually ease into a fervent and impassioned kiss that Josh deems worthy of inclusion in his final cut. Gatsby subsequently, in the midst of the rain, embarks on a walk to catch up with his brother. In the next scene, Gatsby is greeted warmly by Hunter upon his arrival at his house. Hunter's fiance, Lily, quickly joins them in welcoming Gatsby. Gatsby urges them to conceal his presence in the city, in order to avoid his mother's forthcoming party. However, Lily insists that Gatsby has to attend their upcoming wedding, since he is the best man. Gatsby agrees to a commitment not to miss the occasion. Shortly after, when Lily leaves to take a shower, Hunter confides in Gatsby, confessing his inability to carry out the planned marriage. Gatsby is plainly taken aback, and urgently seeks an explanation for his abrupt change of attitude. Gatsby learns the reason for Hunter's decision as they continue to sip their drinks. Hunter actually considers Lily's laughing repulsive. He finds it extremely disturbing that he is unable to make love to her. Gatsby is obliged to evaluate Hunter's conviction, even though he initially thinks it is a foolish justification. Hunter urges Gatsby to wait for Lily to arrive and attempt to make her laugh, in the hopes that her laughter will change Gatsby's perspective. Meanwhile, Ashley sits immersed in the screening of the new film, alongside Roland and the writer, Ted. Roland's disappointment with the film is palpable, and it drives him to exit in a storm of frustration and dissatisfaction, seeking solace in the embrace of drinks to escape the harsh truths. Both Ashley and Ted make attempts to dissuade him, their pleas falling on deaf ears. Ted tells Ashley that she can leave if she wants to, yet she confesses her genuine enjoyment of the film. Thus Ted rewinds the film slightly, and they restart their viewing. Back at Hunter's house, we witness the brothers discussing a myriad of topics. As Lily descends upon the scene, Hunter endeavors to make her laugh, and on his way to depart, Gatsby witnesses her infamous mood-dampening laugh, leaving him utterly astonished. Outside, the rain is pouring heavily, prompting Gatsby to take one of Hunter's umbrellas. Suddenly Gatsby's phone rings, it's Ashley on the line. When he reminds her of their plans, she delivers news of her unavailability, citing her mission to find Roland and convince him of the film's virtues before he subjects it to disastrous re-editing. With that, she hangs up. Gatsby is left to his own thoughts, full of rage at Ashley's perceived closeness to Roland, and perturbed by the extent to which she distances herself in pursuit of an opportunity with him. To find Roland, Ted and Ashley set off on a journey. Meanwhile, Gatsby is still pacing in the rain, and is immersed in his own thoughts. They find out that Roland has stumbled into the Queen's studio as they walk inside a bar. As soon as possible, Ted and Ashley head to the studio in an effort to get hold of Roland. Ashley interviews Ted about his well-known movies while they are on the road, yet their conversation takes an unexpected turn. After unintentionally catching his wife entering his best friend's flat, Ted is shocked to learn she is having an affair. His face grows pale, and his hands start trembling as he tries to comprehend that his wife is betraying him while purportedly out shopping with her sister. Ashley commits to stick by his side and support him through this challenging time, despite the upheaval. While still drenched in the downpour, Gatsby hails a cab and jumps in. At precisely that moment, Chan appears on the other side of the cab. They reminisce about Gatsby's previous encounters with Chan's sister, as well as their first date, which occurred in the pouring rain. However, the limelight unexpectedly turns to Ashley. Gatsby expresses his frustration about the cancellation of his weekend plans while Ashley is preoccupied with her school paper. Chan acknowledges Gatsby's sincere affection for Ashley, and counsels him to speak with her right away, to make clear their respective priorities. 
Gatsby reveals that she is speaking with the renowned director and screenwriter, in response to her question about whether Ashley is interviewing handsome men. Chan starts to wonder whether Ashley might be doing something strange as their talk progresses. Gatsby chooses to call Ashley, but she immediately hangs up the call after tersely stating that she is now embroiled in a difficult issue. Back in Ted's car, when he starts questioning Ashley about Gatsby out of curiosity, she finds it difficult to adequately describe him. She describes him as a brilliant but scattered genius, attributing much of his negativity to his relationship with his mother. The conversation concludes with Ashley confiding in Ted, expressing her belief that Gatsby may have Asperger's syndrome. Presently, Chan and Gatsby emerge from the taxi, opting to continue their companionship with a visit to the museum. They ascend to Chan's apartment, as she is drenched and wishes to change. She imparts to him her evening date plans, much to Gatsby's astonishment. Meanwhile Gatsby seats himself at the piano, embarking on a heartfelt melody, while Chan attentively listens from her quarters. Upon concluding his musical performance, Chan joins in to extol his talent. They engage in a conversation about their respective notions of a perfect romance, diverging primarily on the matter of its conclusion. In Gatsby's vision, a person initially drawn to another ultimately selects a different path. Chan, conversely, envisions events unfolding precisely as they are meant to. Across town we witness Ted's wife, Connie, emerging from his closest friend's dwelling, prompting him to confront her. She swears they had intended to reveal the truth, but Ted accuses her of deceit, betrayal, and exploitation. Ashley intervenes in an attempt to defuse the situation, but inadvertently exacerbates it. She introduces herself as a reporter, commencing to take notes on Connie's declarations, alleging Ted's infidelity with his secretary, actresses, and young women. Ted, disliking how Connie tries to involve Ashley in their turmoil, provides her the studio address, arranges for a taxi, and urges her to seek out Roland. Returning to Chan and Gatsby, they reach the art museum where Gatsby once shared a first kiss with her sister Amy. They amble through the gallery, appreciating the beauty of the artwork while simultaneously delving into their personal histories. Gatsby, admitting to a lack of a concrete future plan, opens the door for Chan to reveal a long-kept secret, her past infatuation with him during his relationship with her sister. She expresses her admiration for Gatsby's romantic gestures, and even divulges details of their intimate encounter in Central Park, an episode that left her sister rating him a six, much to Gatsby's embarrassment. Before settling down they amble about the museum, admiring the stunning artwork that is all around them. Chan asks whether he had affection for her, with a tinge of doubt in her gaze. To her dismay, Gatsby, a touch hesitant, admits that he thought that she was perfectly fine. Following this, as they continue to stroll, Gatsby spots his aunt and uncle in the distance, and his heart skips a beat. He frantically explains to Chan the need to hide himself from them as panic rushes through him. The thought of attending his mother's party fills him with stress. As he slips behind the museum's walls, Ashley calls him at the most inappropriate time. She intends to tell him about what she is experiencing so far, but Gatsby hangs up, unable to talk. Unfortunately fate intervenes, and he unintentionally crosses paths with his aunt and uncle, who inform him that they were just about to call his mother. Gatsby swiftly creates an excuse, claiming that he wanted to surprise his mother, and promises to attend the party with Ashley. Together, they all depart the art museum. Meanwhile Ashley, having ventured into the studio, finds no sign of Roland. To her astonishment, she stumbles upon Francisco Viga, a handsome celebrity who seems heaven-sent. Her heart races in his presence, and she discloses her identity as a journalist there for her school paper. Francisco, captivated by her beauty, declares her the most enchanting journalist he has ever encountered, filling Ashley with delight. The two of them seek refuge from the paparazzi in Francisco's trailer. Inside, Ashley grapples with uncertainty about the propriety of her presence. With no prior plans, Francisco extends her an invitation to dinner, and a subsequent party, but Ashley wrestles with doubts about whether accompanying him is a wise decision. Back in town, as they depart from the museum, Gatsby confides in Chan about his unease regarding his mother's impending party. On the other hand, Chan gently suggests that he could strike out on his own, a notion Gatsby finds somewhat absurd, given the family's wealth. Nevertheless, Chan appears sincere. Soon after, they bid each other farewell, with Gatsby expressing gratitude for the enjoyable time spent together, and wishing her luck on her upcoming date before parting ways. In the ensuing scene, Francisco and Ashley step out of his trailer to embark on their dinner, but the paparazzi swarm them, reveling in the media spectacle of Ashley by his side. Once arriving at an upscale restaurant, Francisco and Ashley engage in spirited talk. Ashley starts by asking about his career, but Francisco quickly changes the topic, asking about her relationship status. Taking a sip of her drink, Ashley admits to technically having a boyfriend. She attempts to describe Gatsby again, but her words lack the elegance of her prior descriptions, and she perceives him as somewhat antiquated. Unfazed, Francisco continues to admire her gorgeous features and welcoming smile. Gatsby is caught up in the glamour of a high-stakes poker game at the same time. His thoughts, though, are a chaotic tornado fixated on Ashley. He cannot get rid of the nagging feeling that she is in peril. 
He places a risky bet before retiring to the penthouse and emptying his pockets of all the money that he just earned. He turns on the television in an attempt to dispel his disquiet. The news regarding Ashley and Francisco hits him like a hammer blow as he is immersed in changing his clothes. His soul is greatly affected. After worrying about her all day and painstakingly planning their time together, he is shocked to see her on television next to a well-known actor. Gatsby's spirit breaks under the weight of disappointment and treachery. He heads to a piano bar in search of peace, the sorrowful melody blending with the sound of drinks clinking. He muses on the complex web of feelings that made him fall in love with someone like Ashley. The gloomy mood of Gatsby is detected. He draws the attention of Terry, a lady who is likewise sitting alone. She approaches him, since she wants to know what is causing the agony in his eyes. With his defenses down, Gatsby unburdens his heart and opens up about being abandoned by his love, who chose the fame of the spotlight over him. In response to his grief, Terry provides a ray of hope by disclosing her special line of work, which involves turning fantasies into realities. She reveals her $500 fee with calm assurance. However, in his desperation, Gatsby openly makes her a $5,000 deal to play Ashley at his mother's party that evening. Meanwhile, Francisco attends a luxurious party with Ashley. She is surrounded by celebrities, and their presence makes everything seem surreal. As she passes through the crowd, she interacts with several of them, interviewing them out of curiosity. She encounters Roland in the midst of the noisy party. He admits that he adores her, and shocks her by extending her an invitation to explore the romantic side of the south of France with him. This renders her speechless. As the night progresses Ashley encounters Ted, who is now inebriated and emotional. He expresses his emotions, acknowledging that her words were a great source of comfort throughout his hard relationship with Connie. He indicates that he is now drawn to Ashley, which again surprises her. Gatsby, on the other hand, accompanies Terry to his mother's gala, attempting to show a dazzling facade to everybody in attendance. Given her spontaneous involvement, he is pleasantly surprised by Terry's skilled portrayal of Ashley. However, upon introducing her to his parents, his mother notices something mysterious about the girl. Francisco subsequently takes Ashley to his apartment, where, spurred by curiosity, he inquires about the intricacies of her relationships with Roland and Ted. She brushes it aside, deep in thought about her moral compass in the middle of her current circumstances. She ponders whether Francisco will extend her an invitation to his bed, and whether she should accept it, even though she remains technically committed to Gatsby. Nevertheless, Francisco Viga embodies her deepest desires. As they ascend, each clutching their drinks, Francisco gently cradles Ashley's face in his hands, and their lips meet. Their passion fills the air, igniting fervent kisses. However, their ardor is unexpectedly disrupted by the arrival of Francisco's girlfriend. Frustration propels Francisco to hurriedly hide Ashley, while he rushes to greet his girlfriend at the door. Francisco hastily conceals Ashley's clothes and then engages in passionate kisses with Tiffany. Just as their passion reaches its highest, Ashley, unintentionally causing a stir, disrupts their stolen moment. She hastily grabs a trench coat and, with the rain pouring, makes her escape just in the nick of time. Tiffany rushes to investigate the source of the disturbance, but finds no one else present. What Ashley did not anticipate was Francisco's girlfriend locking the door behind her. Attempting to gain entry, she finds herself thwarted, trapped in the rain outside. With no other choices left, Ashley descends the fire escape and navigates the streets of New York City, draped in a trench coat, while torrents of rain pour relentlessly from the skies. Her mission is to locate Gatsby, her heart heavy with determination. In the following scene, once alone with his mother, the air is thick with tension and unspoken truths. She musters her courage and confronts Gatsby, her intellect sharp enough to dissect the mystery before her. Gatsby, immersed his drink, feels compelled to explain the incident at the party. It was, he admits, a poorly executed joke, a rebellion against the constraints imposed by his family's appropriateness and way of life. In a moment of vulnerability, Gatsby confides in his mother, revealing his innermost desires. He yearns to break free from the shadow of his brother, Hunter, and pleads for his mother to release him from the burden of her lofty expectations. Gatsby bears his soul, laying it bare for her to witness. Yet his mother, contemplative and concerned, questions whether his upbringing was truly as oppressive as he believes. Gatsby, resolute, maintains that he has long yearned for rebellion, perpetually stifled under the weight of societal pressures. With a heartfelt apology, he acknowledges the perverse streak within him, unable to fathom its origins. After a few moments of silence, his mother decides to share a revelation with Gatsby. She informs him that he inherits his rebellious spirit from her, a truth he initially doubts. Undaunted, she recounts her own tumultuous past, revealing her prior occupation as a hooker before marriage. Destiny took a remarkable twist when she met Gatsby's father in the confines of a hotel room. Her voice trembles with emotion as she confesses her profound affection for him, and how they fell in love. Their union not only bound their hearts, but also sowed the seeds of their current prosperous company, born from her hard-earned savings. While listening to his mother's revelation with tears in his eyes, Gatsby feels the impact of her tale deeply inside his soul. 
She admits, in a voice tinged with sadness, that any excesses in her quest of refinement and image were her last-ditch hustler attempts to put paint over the lingering wounds of the innumerable hotel rooms, where disturbing memories still consume her. Gatsby leaves the party after being moved by his mother's tragic tale, and heads to the piano bar where he was supposed to meet Ashley. In an effort to calm his anxiety, he sits down at the piano and starts to play. Ashley appears out of nowhere and walks over to Gatsby while he plays. After seeing her on television with a well-known actor, Gatsby confronts her and claims that she abandoned him. Ashley, however, avows that nothing occurred, and that she did not turn on him. Gatsby is still dubious, and won't believe what she says. Ashley confesses that she is unable to explain the issue owing to her inebriation, weariness, and the weight of the evening. At that point, Gatsby urges her to take off the wet coat, and offers to bring her a warming cup of coffee. However, he is left puzzled when Ashley, to his surprise, admits that she is wearing nothing underneath. Ashley carefully packs their baggage the next morning in their hotel room. Gatsby, who is seated close, listens to her as she proceeds to narrate the full scenario, which spans from Roland's movie to the heartbreaking discovery of Ted's wife's unfaithfulness. Surprisingly, an aura of calm surrounds him as he listens carefully, words sinking into the depths of his soul. Before waving farewell to the gorgeous city, Ashley confesses her regret at missing out on a romantic carriage ride, her eyes glistening with yearning. But Gatsby, ever the reassuring partner, informs her that no possibilities have been squandered. They soon embark on the carriage journey that Ashley desired. Gatsby contemplates for a while, before finding the guts to open up to Ashley as they wander around the streets and take in the stunning sights of the city. He realizes all of a sudden that she is not the appropriate person for him. He therefore strongly informs her that she deserves a better person. He shocks her by giving her some cash, and a token of his well wishes. Ashley is visibly surprised, and is experiencing a range of emotions. She queries whether he intends to return to Yardley. Gatsby maintains a distant but determined gaze, as he states that life in Yardley is not what he had anticipated. He is resolute in his drive to pursue his aspirations and objectives, carving his own way in this world. With a final glance, he leaves Ashley at the fork of her own path. Gatsby sets his course toward station after this emotionally intense farewell. His heart becomes a maelstrom as he waits, divided between hope and anxiety. The station clock strikes the hour, its toll echoing across the rainy day. Then, as if taken from the pages of a timeless romantic novel, Chan appears from the tunnel's depths. Their gazes connect, and Gatsby, his voice a mix of surprise and love, wonders why she has come. Her answer is both simple and deep, an unyielding confession of love, she is determined that this moment will not pass her by. Their lips connect, and the rain witnesses their passionate heart-stopping kiss, capping the moment with an unforgettable, and profoundly emotional hug. As we follow the unknown journeys of two young protagonists, Gatsby and Ashley, we realize that life's biggest moments frequently occur when we reject tight plans and instead listen to the whispers of our emotions. This film teaches us to grasp chances, embrace life's unexpected turns, and seek the real sources of our pleasure.